Hi everybody, I'm Patricia Rollinson and today I'm going to share with you how to make really, really easy ornaments that are awesome gifts for people. This is done. Um, you could really do this with any amount of skill set. You just will modify what you do. But this is done with dot tools and one liner brush and one comma stroke brush. Um, it's got a little bit of glitter, a little bit of white paint, and a little bit of glass stain, which is how you make this get shiny like that. They're super easy. They take about two hours for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to do. Um, and they're very methodical. They're very soothing. You can do it right in the comfort of the, in front of your television. So it's a great little project to, um, to just do many of them for grandkids and things like that. Anyway, short, fun lesson. I'm going to give you lots of tips and hints, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. When we're painting lace, the first thing we want to do is fit our ornament into the stand. Now this is going to be, this little black screw um, comes with the standard um, the standard lathe. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and I'm going to tuck that head. Make sure you don't have tags and things like that on your bulb. I'm going to push that in and then I'll tighten that down. We have an accessory that makes it a little bit easier that you can buy for very little money, um, pennies really. Um, that is a taller screw and that makes it easier to get a hold of this little flat one if you over tighten it Beware you might not be able to get that undone. Um, I've had my husband have to get in there a couple of times and and take care of that for me Okay, and so I Want to make sure that I'm in there fairly evenly this this side has got a little spring on it so you can um, Flex that and adjust things so as I spin it these are hand-blown ornaments so they're not round. Got a little shiny stuff. Make sure your hands are clean. I will tell you that um, there is a little Vaseline and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off right now that if you touch it and then you touch your ornament, which is what I just did, then you're going to erase the matte finish on the ornament. So make sure that your excess Vaseline is wiped off and don't be afraid of something like that because you can put a stroke over it or you can um, you know, just hide it amongst the myriad of dots and things. You will not see teeny little flaws. But I am going to go ahead and go wash my hands so that I, whatever I touched doesn't touch on there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to use to make even marks is I'm going to put this craft lathe um, painting platform on here. And I'm going to see that I'm put in the center of my ornament there. And what I want this for is I'm going to take my ornament and I'm going to decide bands to go around it. Before we had the craft lathe and before we had this painting platform, um, I very much had to make very scalloped looking lace because it was impossible to get a straight line going around a round surface. And if you've ever tried this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is really, really impossible. This lathe makes life so nice. I'm going to be using this Triple Threat Ghost Rider. It has a white ceramic lead a gray ceramic lead and a rollerball stylus but what we want for this is this white ceramic lead this will actually erase with spit or varnish or eraser or whatever like that so this is going to be great for marking my surface I do want to mark lightly because the more you mess with this fine matte finish then the more you mess with the fine matte finish okay so I have an ornament that I started and I really don't like these big um, clusters of like they were supposed to be fleur de -lis and I didn't like them so I'm going to use this as my pattern or my example um, actually normally what you would be doing let me get the way I do it is I have a paper pattern that I do like a quarter of the design and then I start with this is my top and then I know that this is my middle area so let's get our middle area established Okay, and you can do a couple of things. You can use a ruler. So on this particular thing, this is a flexible see-through ruler, which is lovely for doing ornaments. Okay, so in the middle, that is a one-inch band right there in the middle. Let's take a look here. That's about right here on my one-eighth. So these are marked. This is where the halfway mark is, so I know that's going to be the middle of my bulb. And these one-eighths are pretty darn close to being... Um, about an inch so I'm just going to go ahead and use those eighths because it doesn't matter when you're painting lace because you're making the rolls. So this will spin as you're going around and you want it in there fairly straight and it looks these things are so wonky sometimes. Depending on the wonkiness and how straight you get it in there you might not quite meet perfectly around the other side but by doing it first with your pencil 
then you can adjust when you have your pen, what, your paintbrush. Okay, so I'm just going to rest my hand on here, and then I'm going to put my um, chalk pencil there, and I'm just going to rest it gently. And it's going to kind of skip. I'm not moving my hand, so if the ornament is wonky, then and I'm not moving. I'm going to have to go backwards there. I don't want. Okay, so see how I don't quite have it even? But what's great about this is I can just do a little kind of dotted line and intersect. And I can take my little micro eraser and I can erase that line. Okay, so that's going to keep me on task. Then I can come over here and I can do the same exact thing. So I can put all my banding, so we'll go here with the, our other banding, and I'm wondering if I want to straighten this puppy out just a little bit more. I look to see if it seems to be rotating evenly. I'm not going to have a high point. Okay, so... So we're going to go here, and we know that we want a nice thin little line here. see where my wonkiness is. One thing that I'd like to reassure you about, that turned out a little bit better, is when you're looking at this side of the ornament, you can't be looking at this side of the ornament at the same time. So the neat thing about this is, is long as you don't like track cockeyed, um, if you have a little variation all the way around, you will never see it. And that is such good assurance for me, personally. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my other lines, and then we'll get started with our pattern placement. Okay, I'm going to be using my Raphael Kalinsky Quill brush. This is an expensive brush. Um, it is definitely, it's like 30 bucks, um, 25 to 30, 40 dollars for the different sizes. It has got a little kind of plastic quill that used to be a bird quill, um, and now it's plastic because of like kindness to animals, but we are dealing with an animal fur um, hair brush. I don't know if you can see, let's get you on something else. The point on that darn thing is the pointiest point you're ever going to see on a brush. This brush is crafted by um, like hundreds of centuries of passed down from mothers to daughters um, brush makers in France that are special. They're the highest, like they're the elite of all brush makers. They're hand tied, they're hand sorted, they laid out so all of the follicles go in the same direction, they're hand tied with a little like tie knot thing and then they're put into this and then they're hand cut as well. So I mean, it's an amazing little brush and one brush will last you 30 years. But I'm not telling you that because this makes all the difference. I highly recommend once you get into painting lace or any kind of line work and detail that you get at least one of these and the number two or the number three is what I recommend. Um, but what I always do, and I've got this, my grubby little paint bucket out here because this has got, you know, different compartments, you know, for mediums and then your big sponge area, your dirty water, and then your clean water. But I always wet my brush and I set it on these little pedestals here and I let it sit for five minutes and it makes all the difference. If you want to float prettier, you're going to do that with your flat brush. If you want to um, do anything. Water is attracted to water, so once the brush is fully saturated, you're going to get a much more beautiful painting moment. So that's just a handy dandy tip for why isn't my paint flowing on my brush. It's because your paintbrush is dry. Okay, so we're going to go over here. We're going to get out some Snow White. And I'm going to back out just a little bit so you can see the palette too. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to get the right consistency of paint. So here we go, we're going to thin that paint down, and we want it to be creamy, like um, like kind of thin, um, heavy cream. Okay, so we just want it flowy, and I'm going to fully load. This is against everything you normally do with your paintbrush. Don't fully load your paintbrushes, that's bad. But I'm going to fully load and jostle the paint into my brush. And I always just go ahead and tip my brush on my palette. That way it kind of gets the extra stuff off. Okay, then we're going to come over here. We're going to rest our hand. I'm going to get the right direction that we've got going here. I'm going to make sure I'm comfortable. I'm going to set my brush down. And I'm going to line, hopefully somewhere near the top of my stroke lines. 
and I can paint this whole line. And now I'm going to meet that one. There we go. All with my brush and all instantly. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint something like this manually without any tools, but it's hard. So um, definitely use the tools that are available to us today. We are in such a wonderful time to be a painter because you've got all the tools. So there's no sense in working hard and having wonky results and subpar results when you can just do it easily with little little tools like these. So I'm going to go ahead and do my other ones off camera and then I will come back to you and show you about the rest of the pattern. Okay, and I wanted to share with you once you get further down on this um, thing, you can rest here. Be careful that this will tip so you want to rest knowing that it will move if you do. So I anchor my elbow down here. Um, so I'm not putting all my pressure on this end. On this end, you can push and do all the things. Way down here, because we don't want to block this off, um, it can't. So I'm just going to rest my hand here and turn away. If I need to stop and pick up, load more paint. By the way, the reason that this brush is amazing, so sorry. This isn't a brush video, but um, it's important. Is Do you see how fat it is in the middle? Okay, that's called the belly of a brush. And what that means is that's where the water collects. And it's just like a soda straw when you cap the tip and all the water is in the belly of the straw. The same thing is happening here. You have all your water there and when you touch the tip, it dribbles out and feeds it slowly. Everywhere where the tip touches, it feeds a continuous stream of, of paint water. So that is why this brush is so super, it's not just that it's got a fine tip, it's because, and it also keeps it tip, it's because it um, holds the water and feeds it so nicely. So in order to make this line start again, I'm going to start in the middle of this line and get it going again. Okay, and if you pause, just make sure you're not pausing and pushing. You want to keep, I'm going to lift that back up and come here go. Just perfect. So you can move all around and if you feel like you need to have the pressure, paint your details on this side and turn the, the ornament around to get the other side. So if you feel like you do need this side um, for support, then just flip your ornament around. The other thing that almost always happens is these little guys right here will attach themselves to your projects and then they will they will um, hijack and go along with you and you'll very really find them on the floor in your dog's mouth or something like that. We do offer extra ones of these replacement ones. So that, like, it just happens. It happens to me almost every project. I'll find something in my dog's mouth that I shouldn't be finding there. Anyway, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to put on the top details of the pattern and that is going to be done just using our ghostwriter and some some very easy um, estimating marks and I'll show you what those look like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to divide this up into even things. Um, I'm going to go for about, take our measurement, oh god, this looks about an inch. Okay, so I can go about an inch out. And I'm going to, sometimes you can use these little guys right here for even um, divisions, so that's a handy little tip right there. Okay, back at it. So in order to go and have this be measured correctly and evenly. I'm going to go straight across about an inch. I'm going to make a mark. And then this next one is a little bit tricky because I've got to divide this thing into thirds on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide that that's maybe, and then maybe, and I think this one's a little bit wide, so I'll just get my eraser out. As long as I've been doing this, I still struggle to make this even. Okay, and then then I'll turn this like this. I'll go straight across. Or as my dad used to say, across. And then we'll go here. And then we'll look and see. This one appears to be just a little bit low, and everybody else seems to be on the same plane. So I'll just erase. Notice that that erases really, really nicely. Like I said, be gentle. You don't want to do a lot of erasing. Okay, so then that gives us our top area of stuff. Now what we need to do is come down to here and we're going to give ourselves a little line halfway in between there. And you're going to follow your pattern. Okay, and your pattern will come on a grid like this. This area right here is going to be the halfway mark. 
this is the top and so then you'll just come down from and it'll be life size and you'll come down from there and you'll put your pattern on according to where it sits on this grid. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to do too much of your pattern um, via this marker because you don't want to have to erase. Okay, so I want this halfway in between and I don't like the placement of this little guy right there. Maybe even a little bit lower. So then I'll just go nudge, 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 nudge. has to be the right kind of white eraser to erase on this delicate surface. Okay, and I also don't like you. Okay, come down, give ourselves a little line, and then come down here, all the way around. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to lightly, 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 Okay, we're going to make the pattern. So this one has a little bit of a loop out. I'm going to put mine on first and decide if I want to go outside or inside my um, little loops. Then the next thing, we know that we've got a stroke down here and then we're going to stroke over here. So that can all be free-handed. So I just need to draw these little, um, I'm not even sure, ear-shaped um, shapes on there. Okay, you're going to look at your pattern from the top and you're going to decide this guy right here seems like he might be leaning just a little bit. So I'm going to come back over here and make him just a little bit wider and then I'll just erase those little lines. Okay, and now I look at it from the top and decide this guy over here doesn't seem to be very balanced. Okay, that's better. And now I need to put an inner, inner row, and I think it's going to have to be an inner row because I don't have very big spaces here. So I'm going to put an inner row. <clears throat> That's going to straighten that edge out just a little bit. Okay, and the next thing that I need to do is I need to do a series of little dots every so far all the way around. <clears throat> and my dots are going to have to line up with the other side. You're going to be so happy that you have a comfortable place to put your hand when you're done. Alright, so we're just going to do these every oh, quarter of an inch or so. And we'll do the top and the bottom. Okay, to do the other side, I'm going to rest my hand here on this side. And as I get these to the top, I'm just going to make my line. I'm going to have a series of dots that goes up and down from there. So they have to be straight or people are going to know that you were drinking. That's just a little bit of a joke. Okay, so we want to make sure they're straight. And so I'm just lining them going straight down the barrel. I'm just lining those up. I'm getting a little bit far away from myself, so I'm going to have to shrink these guys in just a little bit. Okay, one thing that you're not going to be able to do is you're not going to be able to paint the details up here while you have this in the lathe. But what you can do is you can do your middle details and then you can put it in the lathe upright, okay? And you just won't spin it with this device right here. But you can put it in there upright and then that will hold it for you and you can do those top details that way. And that's sometimes, I don't know if you've ever done this or not, but I have certainly done it over my whole life you pick something up and you're trying to hold it so gently and so hard but it's like big like that and you end up kind of squeezing it and then it kind of just like ping pops out of your hand and then it's rolling down along the table and then it falls on the floor and curse splat. <sighs> so I've painted enough lace ornaments that this has happened to me many times. One time it bounced 15 times and then it finally broke. So I definitely know about curse splat. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a series of little V's all the way down, connecting these little guys. Okay, 
and we'll just go on both sides of that. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to one of the tools that I think is on the top 20 silliest tools you have to have. <sighs> it's an absolute fact. Um, this is the Easy Dot tool and this is the Mini Dot tool. And what these are is these are a series of scaled down or up um, dotting tools. So this is number one and it's really fine. Now if you let paint dry on these like I have then your number one becomes a number two and it's less pointy. So don't let paint dry and if you do take the paint off. Um, and then these are larger sizes. And the reason for this is is you never know like you never know what size the back end of your paintbrush is. These are great dotting tools but if you need a number one you'd have to go through your whole brush assortment to find the right size and if you're doing lace you definitely want to know what sizes you have. So I'm going to go into my number one to make these dots in between here. Okay and here's the secret to making good dots, fresh paint. So if you don't have fresh paint then you will get little dimpled dots or dots that don't quite, they stick but they don't do what they're supposed to do. You definitely want to get fresh paint out even if you've had the paint out for 20 minutes. Just get the fresh paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot from one side to the other on here in what we call a um, graduating dot. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then I'm going to dot and dot and then when we get to the middle it's going to be teeny teeny. Okay, And I might go ahead and make those dots on the ends a little bit bigger but I'll wait and see how, how much stuff this gets. And then after you do one set you wipe off your paint and you go on to the next dot set. And this is when this craft lathe is going to shine because this means that you're going to be able to get all the dots done and not touch anything. So you can just rotate it around and you have dots everywhere drying in different <clears throat> time frames and you don't have to worry about um, putting your hands in things. So and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the dots that go inside here in these areas and I don't want those super big so I'll stay on this tool but I'll probably go into a number four on those. Okay, And then I'll wipe those off each time Okay, and I'll just go around and do those dots too. Okay, I just want to share that when you're doing this, what I'm loving is I've got this place to rest my hand. I can't have you ever tried freehand holding this? And this is this is something that I've taught this class classes like these all across the country. Um, if this hand is free and floating and moving, and this hand is anchored on the free and floating and moving thing, then everything is moving in all the directions, and pretty soon you have like a warbly thing. This is absolutely lovely because I have this anchored completely. This is anchored. This is anchored. I'm everything as secure as I can get it. So being able to just pop back and forth with this holding my hand steady is brilliant. Look at how straight my lines are. Look at how straight all those little dippy dots are and stuff like that. This makes, it's, a, it's just amazing. Okay, I've got a little bit of a correction that I've got to make here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake it and just pretend like I lined it up with that little V. I think it'll be more noticeable if I were to um, put it right on that V. The V isn't going to be as noticeable as the line of dots, so I think I'd rather just have that V off a little bit. Okay, so now I've got my ornament put in sideways, and the neat thing about this is I can change the angle so that I can get a good angle for painting my lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just that. I'm going to do one stroke at a time. Any line that's too big for you to paint all at one time, try to pause in the middle and then pick it up like we did on these long lines over here. It's super important you keep the consistency of your paint good or you will struggle. Okay, so we'll just go ahead. You want to keep the pressure on your brush equal as well. You don't want to go fat thin, fat thin, unless that's the look you're going for. Okay, now we're going to get ready to um, do some of our stroke work. So the stroke work is super important that you treat it just about like you're going to treat your liner brush. And so I'm going to load it all the way to the top with my paint. I'm going to anchor my hand. And then what I want to do with this is I want to push down, pull up to a tip. It was a little bit wobbly. And then do one side 
and then repeat on the other side. It's really hard to do slow strokes, so showing is like you're always going to be a little bit less stable when you're doing that. Okay, and then what I can do is I could reverse this and I could do my long strokes while I'm after I'm changing sides. So I could do those strokes here and here, flip over and do my longer strokes here and here, which go. Let's see, so we've got some little guys that are going to go. Now, this isn't quite fat enough for me, so I'm going to tip my brush and then just draw that straight up to the center. So I'll have some thin stuff and then some thick stuff. Okay, and this is how we get those strokes on there without making a big fat mess. And I'm wondering if I just did that wrong. No, I did that right. Okay, now while I'm here in the same position, the idea is, is to get as much stuff done as humanly possible before changing. Now, do make sure that you are drawing towards the middle. It'd be real easy to paint kind of cockeyed. So I want to go here. And actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to make my dots first, because I can see me totally going cockeyed. Okay, I've got dots dry, and now I'm looking for lines that need to be erased. Well, everything's dry, and I haven't glittered. You want to do this before you glitter. Okay. Not a big old long one. Doesn't take but a second, and I'll tell you, having those lines so that you know that you're going to be all lined up is just priceless. You can't do it. You can freehand, but you're going to have a lot of goobers and things on there that you're not going to like. Now, I have to say one thing about these um, ornaments. They make phenomenal gifts. Um, I know a woman, and I think she's in upstate New York, that has supported herself. She got a divorce, and she needed to support herself, and all she does is make these ornaments and sell them. Um, as gifts, but they make great granddaughter, baby's first Christmas, wedding present gifts. Um, the neat thing about ornaments is people don't throw ornaments away. They collect them every year, and then when they take them out, they think of you. They're like, oh, remember when Patty made this ornament for me or whatever. Um, it's very, very special. This is one of the best gifts that you could ever give. And the neat thing about these is they look like they're store-bought, but they know that you made it yourself, and like it's like this professional aura and level. And when people see these, they're always so shocked and they don't know that it's just one line connected to another and then a whole lot of dip dots. So really super duper um, smart thing to do for um, painting presents for people or even doing a business. And I wanted to share, we have some phenomenal colors right now. These are, and they're just the beautiful blown glass ones. There's a little peacock blue. There's a yellow. Look at that yellow. That's beautiful. Very, very hard to find. And the 4-inch size is key. And we also have some stands for them as well that hold them um, in a good, um, like, a good dimension for this. So right now what I'm going to do is finish erasing, and then I'm going to show you how to use glass stain. Actually, I think I'll show you how to do that right now. Well, I've got my brush in my hand. I've got glass stain, it's a clear glass stain, and what it does is it eats off the matte finish and it makes really cool. Now I'm not sure I'm gonna like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do one little section here. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna finish it around and um, I'm not gonna worry about that for myself because this is my ornament, but um, you'll know. So I did it, here I'll show you what I did. I had my experiment that went terribly awry and look at what happens, is it makes it have just that shininess. And so I think by alternating, I think that's going to give it a really cool look. So we're going to go ahead and I do it within our dots. Okay, and then I think every other one. This is one of those things. It's good to have a couple of ornaments laying around. That's what the cheap ones, the little um, three-inch ones are good for. Experiment on them, and then you don't wreck your, your big ones. So look at how cool that is. I think that might look pretty neat. Okay, one of the final steps that we're going to make is we're going to go, we're going to take our, and where did I set it? Our bead and glitter glue, 
and our Glamour Dust glitter. And we're going to go right over the top of our strokes. If you go a little outside the lines, don't worry about it. And while it's wet, just go ahead and give it a little spritz. And I've got my, um, bead, uh, my glitter tray underneath. And that's going to keep um, the glitter collected so I can put it back in the jar. I didn't realize quite how expensive glitter was until I was pricing it for a convention one time. And it was like, woo, that stuff's expensive. So I'm a little bit more cautious about how I dispose of it now. So you can choose how much of your stuff you want to have glitzy. It's always good to have just a little bit of glitz and glam. Um, you know, once again, it's just everybody's personal preference. And by the way, another kind of really cool trick, you can paint this entire ornament, with the exception of alternating or whatever, with just the glass stain, because then it looks like it's just been all etched. It's really beautiful. It's very, it's not subtle, and you got to do it on a dark ornament. It doesn't work so good on the light ones. But on dark ornaments, it is gorgeous. You, you would really love that experiment. So I'm going to glitter the rest of these, and I hope that you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope you get out there and try a couple of these because I think you really would like it.